Hey everyone, we're making a series of videos available to you to learn Amazon EC2 with 10 labs and 20 facts and refreshers for your exam. The full course is available on YouTube. It's also available on Udemy. You can check the links in the description below to view the Udemy link. This course is produced by Cloud Yeti. We make simplified cloud computing, AWS, and DevOps videos. You can contact us by emailing us, checking out our GitHub, visiting our website, or following us on LinkedIn. I'll be the presenter for this course. My name is Saurav Sharma. I am seven times AWS certified. You can support us by helping us reach 5,000 subscribers. We're currently around 3,300 and reaching 5,000 is very important to us. So if you want to support us, start by subscribing to us. And you can also watch our other content, uh, buy our courses on Udemy, etc. We're adding a lot more content, so we're open to feedback, suggestions, and requests from you guys because we're making these videos for you guys. All right, now let's get started. Welcome back. We stopped at fact number seven. Let's look at number seven now. The EC2 pricing model. You have to know about the EC2 pricing model. The EC2 service gives you three pricing models. One of them is on-demand instances. This is where you rent your EC2 instances for a few seconds or hours or days. You just pay as you go. You know, you pay as you go, it's gonna be expensive. This is the most expensive option because you're just paying as you go. And if you knew that you need an EC2 instance for you know an extended period of time from at least one year, then you would probably wanna reserve your EC2 instance. When you reserve EC2 instances, you pay upfront for one to three years. And uh, the more upfront you pay, the longer the term is, you end up saving the most you're getting a big discount with reserved instances. So if you have a workload that is going to be running for extended period of time, then you want to look into reserved instances. The third option you get is spot instances. Now spot instances are uh, instances that may or may not be available for you to use. Uh, if it's available, you bid on them. Now these are spare capacity that AWS has at any time. If there are some spare servers, then you get an uh, opportunity to bid on them. You can use them, but AWS can terminate your instances with a two minute of notice. And because of this arrangement, you get up to 90% discount uh, on the cost of EC2 spot instances compared to on-demand instances, right? You have to bid on them uh, if available, and you may get a big discount when using spot instances. So depending on your workload and depending on your needs, you can use a mix of on-demand, reserved, and spot instances to make better utilization of the resources and control your cost. Let's look at fact number eight. You have to know about the EC2 tenancy model. The EC2 tenancy uh, model uh, tells you whether the virtual machines that you launch, if they are on a shared host or if they are not shared with anyone. So in the cloud, when you launch an EC2 instance, many other users are also probably sharing the same host machine as your EC2 instance is, right? So with dedicated instances, only your virtual machines can be in a physical machine, a host machine, but you end up paying more for this option. Uh, and Within the dedicated types of instances, there's dedicated instance and dedicated host. Dedicated host give you the most control over your physical machine. If you have strict uh, regulations and requirements, like if you're in the defense industry or banking industry, you can look into the dedicated option. Let's look at fact number nine. When an EC2 instance is stopped, right? So we looked at the instance lifecycle earlier but you have to know that when your EC2 instance is stopped, certain things happen. The private IP remains with the EC2 instance, but the public IP goes away. 
you cannot expect to keep your public IP if you stop your EC2 instance. Now that's unless you have an elastic IP attached to your EC2 instance, and that's another thing. But most of the time, the default public IP that you get goes away when you stop an EC2 instance. The underlying host, the physical machine, may also change when you stop an EC2 instance and restart later. So you have to keep these things in mind just to understand you know, how EC2 works and what happens when you stop. You can go to this link to learn the differences and the nature of what happens when you, know, you stop, terminate, or hibernate EC2 instances. Let's look at fact number 10. We talked about you know, public IP in the last slide, but let's look at this once again. When you launch an EC2 instance, Let's look at the EC2 instance we launched earlier. If I click on my running instances, this demo EC2 instance that I launched earlier got a public IP address. This is the public IP address. And it has a private IP address. What if I stop this instance? Keep a note of the IP. 3.95.31.250. After a while, when the EC2 is stopped, if you look down, the public IP address is gone. The private IP remains with the instance, but the public IP is gone. And if I restart the instance now, if I start the instance once it's stopped, it will very soon get a new public IP address. Most likely, it's going to be different from the one it had before. And as you can see, the IP is different than the one before. If you go back in the video and see, you'll see that the IP is different. The IP that goes away is the EC2 public IP address. Now, if you don't want this public IP to go away, you would use something called the elastic IP. The elastic IP is simple to provision. You just click on allocate new address and you click on allocate and you know there's a new IP address allocated for you. And then you can quickly click on actions and associate the address to your instance, associate. And at that point, your EC2 instance has an elastic IP. You see this blue IP address. And when you stop an EC2 instance with an elastic IP, the elastic IP stays with the EC2 instance. But when an elastic IP is attached to an instance, that is not running, you pay for the Elastic IP. When the Elastic IP is attached to an instance that is running, you don't pay, right? Basically, if it's not running, you pay for it. So that's something you need to know about public IP and Elastic IP. Let's look at fact number 11. You can turn on termination protection on your EC2 instances to protect them from being accidentally deleted. In the cloud, resources are easy to launch, but also easy to destroy, right? If you want to protect your EC2 instances from accidental deletion, let's say someone comes to my account and you know just is playing around, and while doing this, accidentally clicks on terminate, and somehow you know actually ends up clicking on terminate, right? There's only two places you had to click, but what I can do is I can enable termination protection on this instance by going here, change termination protection, and I can enable termination protection. So when I go and try to terminate this EC2 instance, I cannot, and I have to disable the termination protection first. So this way you have an added layer of security before someone can you know, turn off your instance, either accidentally or intentionally. Let's look at fact number 12. You can view the EC2 instance metadata by visiting this URL from inside the EC2 instance, 169.254.169.254 slash latest slash metadata. So not only this will be helpful when you're uh, you know, working inside your EC2 instance and you wanna see some of the metadata. This IP is important to remember. In fact, the whole path is important to remember while working with AWS. And you can look into metadata like IAM credentials, the IP address, the AMI ID, the instance ID, 
etc., etc. Let's look at fact number 13. You can run commands on your EC2 at launch using a user data section that's provided to you in the launch process. In page number three, during the launch process, there's an advanced details section. And if you click on advanced details, this box will pop up, the user data box will pop up. And here, you can paste in your script, right? It can be a bash script or it can be a PowerShell script in case of Windows. And you can paste in certain scripts that will run during startup. So before you go to your EC2 instance, after you launch, you know, something will already be executed the scripts that you want or the commands that you want will be executed beforehand. And we have a lab on this coming up so we can do this together. Let's look at fact number 14 in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.